So you're ready to dive into Saros, but work's busy. Zoom, meetings, deadlines, we get it. If that's you, don't stress. We got you covered. I'm Molly, and I'm gonna show you how to create some really cool animated content using the Sero Studio with no coding needed. No stress, no hassle, just pure creativity. How, you might be wondering? Well, I have conveniently designed this beautiful New York City food guide, and we're gonna talk about how I built that here today. By the end of this quick video, I hope you'll leave feeling ready and inspired to create your own stunning designs. So if you're ready to become a Saros Pro, let's dive in. Welcome to the Saros Studio, an intuitive content builder where you can turn your ideas into reality. If you've used design products before, such as Figma or Photoshop, you should feel right at home in the studio. We've got a canvas, which can be adjusted to any size, depending on what you're trying to create, all the tools you'll ever need to design and build something monumental, pages for things like presentations or microsites, of course, a layers panel, which shows the hierarchy of your objects on your canvas, and finally, the bread and butter of Saros, our inspector panel. This is where you can adjust attributes of objects on your canvas, like text, images, and shapes, and where you'll be setting up interactions and animations. We also have a preview feature where you can quite literally see your creations unfolding in real time. Okay, ready to get started? Let's give our canvas a start by making a few adjustments. So first, click on your canvas to select it, and then head to the inspector panel. Click on that color swatch. Let's pick a dark gray color to match our design. I'm also going to adjust the height of this page as this will be a longer scrolling experience. But know that we can always come back and adjust this later on. Now, for this example, I have a few assets that I pre-pulled from Getty. You can of course add whatever assets that you wish from images, videos, and even your own fonts. Simply drag and drop them onto your canvas or copy and paste directly from most other design platforms. We have a couple of cool integrations built into Sero Studio, like a noun project for every icon that you'll ever need and Getty Images for best in class photography and video. First, let's focus on building out this header area. We have things like alignment and smart guides built right into Saros that will help make your designs pixel perfect. So note how easy this is so far. Not to brag, but I think this is starting to look pretty good. Quick pro tip, make sure to stay organized in your layers panel by grouping objects together. This is gonna help keep things really nice, neat, and tidy so that adding interactions later on will be super easy. Okay, let's start bringing this design to life. Now I should preface that one of our core values at Saros is that we wear our chicken suits. So I'm gonna say something kind of crazy. It's our best practice to animate everything. But when we say that, we are not trying to tout that text should be flying in and weaving and bobbing all around your screen. Instead, we are of the mindset that strategically placed animation absolutely enhances the effectiveness of your content. Next, let's start by adding some animation. We've got three types of animation here at Saros. Entrance effects, attention seekers, and exit effects. We'll actually play around with all three of these here today with all of these cool illustrations that we've added to this New York City food guide. First off, exit effects. Let's start with our clouds and we'll add to each of these clouds an exit effect so that they slide off of the screen. And one thing that's really cool about Saros is you can control the direction. So simply select one cloud and have it slide out to the left and now select the other one and have it slide out to the right. Easy peasy. Next up, we'll head to entrance effects and we'll give the New York food guide text and all of the other illustrations a really simple fade in effect. Pro tip, play around with duration to easily direct user eye down the page. Next up, let's talk about attention seekers. These are my favorite. Let's head to the Empire State Building visual, and if we bring in the Empire State Building as one layer, and the light on top of it as a wholly separate layer, we can add an attention-seeking animation to that light so that it flashes. Here's another pro tip. You can easily adjust the duration of that flash to make it faster or slower. 
As you can see, we have a number of preset animations built directly into the Serra Studio, and it's worth noting, when applying animations to any object, you can hop over to the live preview to see them play out in real time, which is super helpful to get your piece feeling just right. I think this is starting to look pretty good. To get started working on our second block of content lower down the page, let's create a tabbed section, which will essentially show and hide different pieces of the design when a user clicks between each of these tabs. So first, let's create that initial tab. We've got a few graphics, some text, and the actual tabs themselves. Now that we're done with the first tab, of course, adding some attention-seeking animation first, let's group these layers together, double-click on the group, and label it breakfast. Next, simply Command-C, Command-V, if you're on a Mac, to make two carbon copies of our breakfast tab. Pop quiz, any guesses on what we're doing next? If you guessed relabeling the other two breakfast tabs, lunch and dinner, you guessed it right. All we're gonna do from here is double click to rename our breakfast copy and our breakfast copy copy, lunch and dinner, and simply swap out that content for our updated assets and text. Now, time to dive into the tabs and how to actually create some interaction between them. So we're gonna use my favorite thing about Saros, which is our show target and hide others interaction, so that when a user clicks between these tabs, we quite literally show our target tab and in one super quick motion, hide the other two. So to start off, navigate to the left and click on your hotspot tool. Think of your hotspots as invisible interactive areas on your canvas that interactions can be applied to. They won't actually be visible in the final design and it's super important to use hotspots because this is what's tracked from an analytics perspective. So that means six months from now when your CMO asks you who's clicked on breakfast versus dinner, if you log into your Sarah's analytics dashboard, it's gonna be really easy to make your CMO very happy with that info. Now, let's start setting up the interaction. With your hotspot selected, click on the interaction tab in your inspector panel, and you'll note that there's three different types of interactions you can add. We've got on click, on hover, and on view. For now, we'll keep it simple with an on click interaction. So select on click and navigate down to group based visibility and select show target and hide others. Now I'll note that because we thought ahead and grouped all of our assets in our breakfast tab together, all we have to do is select the breakfast group as our target, and we don't have to remember to select our donut and our text box and our coffee. So simply selecting this show target and hide others and placing our target as breakfast and clicking save begins this interaction. Now the good news is, to create the hotspots for lunch and dinner, we are essentially gonna do the exact same thing. The only difference is our targets. So for lunch, we will show lunch and make sure that we are hiding the breakfast and dinner tab and so on and so forth. Now for the cherry on top, let's add one more thing, a subway. So we'll drag and drop our subway car onto our canvas and this time we'll give it an entrance effect so that it slides in. And we're gonna adjust two more things here. One, let's adjust the duration so that it happens a little bit more slowly than the default 0.8 seconds. And two, let's select repeat so that the subway continues to come back. I know if only the real New York City subways appeared this frequently, life would be so great. Okay, as we wrap up, I hope we've piqued your curiosity enough for you to jump into Saros and start exploring a piece of your own. If starting from a blank canvas feels too scary, same, I get it. We actually have an entire library of pre-built templates that you can download into your account for inspiration. And it's super easy to copy and paste anything from a template into a new experience and start modifying. I would also encourage you to head to Sarah's Inspire that's our collection of favorite shareable client experiences that are literally designed to showcase the art of the possible. 
One more quick pro tip. This is one of my favorite new features that we rolled out in the last few months. It's called the Asset Library, and it's essentially a place where you get to store any type of asset in Saros. That could be as small as a button or as large as an entire tab module, say, talking about New York City items for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then later on, when you start a new experience, open up that asset library, drag and drop your assets directly onto your canvas and continue creating from there. And that's a wrap. If you wanna dive deeper to learn more about Saros, head to Saros Educate. It's our online educational portal with frequently asked questions, quick tips, webinars, all the things that you'd ever need to create the best possible Saros content and really get those creative juices flowing. So thanks for joining and happy building.